with more of the Pope on Film. It's time, Bunny! It is time. Yes, Bunny, my friend, my brother, and legally my accomplice, it is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film podcast to Madison and Watusi our way into the second half of the show, and it is said second half, wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our hand-picked, hand-crafted, and hand-job movie of the week. And this week, we continue our summer-long look at the new film genre that I have dubbed COVID-19, with a look at the 2020 ad-lib Canadian elevator film. I just want to say that again. Yes. That's an important phrase. I may be the first person in the world to ever truly say this sentence. Um, uh, we continue our summer-long look at the new film genre that I've dubbed COVID exploitation with a look at the 2020 ad-lib Canadian elevator film called simply Corona. Corona. Also known as, also known as Fear is a virus. Yes. Also known as... Wait, is this all in an elevator? It's also known as Canadians yelling, the movie! Hooray! Yes. Buddy, on a scale from nine and a half, how much did you love this incredibly moving drama? On a scale of what to what? On a scale of nine and a half to ten, how much did you love this incredible drama? Well, on that, I'm going to go nine and three quarters. <laughs> um, I love what you did with my guy over here. <laughs> That's what you do when you're not doing the right thing. <laughs> it's, I freaking love it's, it. I Love it. It's a patch. <laughs> I think it's so great. It took me a while to realize what you had done. I mean, come here. Look at what he did to the to the me on the screen there. <laughs> Under construction, isn't that great? I love that so much. It's like Mal. Oh my god. Mal has gone around the house covering up all pictures of themselves. Yeah. And it's like I un I fully understand because it's a it's like a body dysmorphia sort of thing that like it must be difficult. It's not difficult for me to see pictures <laughs> of myself as a guy all over the place, but I imagine that for some trans people, it would be very difficult to see that. Yeah. You know, I totally understand where they're coming from, but they went through the entire house like even so much as on the table here, I had a photograph. That featured them. The next morning, they put like a like a, like a box of tea over them on the picture. That's how serious Mal is taking it right now. I, I mean, okay, I, so I mean, I, I would just want to say, hopefully, it's like just kind of a phase, you know? Yeah. Because at some point, you would need to embrace your whole journey. Mm-hmm. As a person, so you know, if if you need to block shit out for now, cool, you know. Yeah. But but at some point you have to come back around, and that's who you were, you know. That's a yeah. that's that's all a part of your story. Yeah. Like uh, like I'm. There's a part of me that still feels like I'm Steve, and if someone calls me Steve, as long as they're not like dead naming me, like my father-in-law, I mean, if someone comes up to me that I know, like, I don't know, Day or Christian or some person we know, hey, Steve, oh, wait, Maylin, like, okay, that's fine, I'm not going to get upset about that, because, you know, I'm still me. Like, Eleanor right. came to me, like, a couple of weeks ago and said, I miss, I miss Dad. And it's like, I'm still Dad, except also I'm Mom. But I'm not. 
Yeah. I am. I mean, I'm still the person who I was before. It's just I have evolved. Yeah. If Pikachu evolves to Pichu, it's still Pikachu. It's just Pikachu has evolved into something else. I've evolved now, and I love it, and it's great. Yes. I freaking love it. Okay, so this week's movie is Corona, Fear is a Virus. It is part of our summer-long look at COVID exploitation films. We do themed summers every year, and this year we're doing cheaply made Corona exploitation films because I don't want to watch all the Fast and the Furious. Fuck <laughs> those movies. I'm not doing it. We could do Rocky, but there's just not enough. I, I don't think there's enough Rocky. If we're doing twice a week, we could probably do all the Rockies. Yeah. But uh, the two creeds are great. Are they? I haven't I seen them. either one of them. Yeah. Oh, you gotta it. You you've got to at least Creed two because that one is a follow up to the best Rocky film, Rocky Four. Okay. And Ivan Drago has a son, and the son wants to be a boxer, and Ivan Drago sets up a match between like Drago Junior. And Creed. And it is Dolph Lundgren. And uh, what's her name? That chick who used to be everywhere for a few years in the 80s is in it. Richie yeah. Nielsen. Yes. She's in it. it. It's a really good film. I think it's because it's a follow up to my favorite horrible Rocky. Like that entire movie, Rocky Four, that's just a big shark jump. <laughs> yes, it is. That's just a big jumping shark. So we've done the summer of Saw, the summer of Star Wars, the summer of Fred Willard was freaking great. I expected Fred Willard to show up in this film. Yes. This seemed like one of those, not because it's an, it's an entirely ad-libbed film, because this film is ad-libbed, and that's uh, in Fred Willard's wheelhouse, but it, this seemed like, um, we are listening, I am listening, you are there, I am here, whatever. The, the alien radio movie. This scene. I, I believe virus. you. I believe you. This seems like one of those low budget films that has nobody, 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 nobody. Fred Willard! And nobody. Yes. You know? I expected him to just pop up and start saying, like, uh, <laughs> So. Uh, and then last year we did a bunch of movies from the IMDb Model 100, and that's when we learned if we really want click, we need to talk about Reset Eva D. Yes. There's a big Reset Eva D fandom out there. So, uh, Reset Eva D. You're welcome, Turkey. Uh, Corona the Movie. It's a 2020 Canadian film. So we can make La South Park and blame Canada for this. Yes. Hooray! It was written and directed by Mostafa Keshvari, which I think is great because Lord knows that there are a lot of Vulcan movie directors out there. You don't see a lot of Klingon movie directors. No. I think that it's a shame, and I think that more Klingons should be in Hollywood making movies. It's nice to finally see a Klingon voice. Yes, Hollywood. it is. Well, well, in Canadia would. And 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 I totally believe that it was written and directed by a Klingon because nobody in this movie are real humans. They're all caricatures of a human as if they are humans seen through the eyes of a Klingon. I swear to God, the guy in the wheelchair, the angry Nazi guy, uh, I swear to God, the angry Nazi guy was Santa Claus from season two of I Think You Should Leave. <laughs> uh, he was also he was also in uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once. I was How really was he? excited. To see someone from I Think You Should Leave appear in Everything Everywhere all at once. 
uh, the guy who plays Santa Claus in two skits in season two of I Think You Should Leave. His name is, his, the actual actor's name is Biff Whip. <laughs> and he plays Santa in that. And he also appears in the laundry, in the laundromat, the old white guy who looks like Santa Claus in the beginning of the movie. Yeah. Who dances with short round and then he appears at the end. Oh, I love that guy. I love that guy. I, I marked out when I saw someone from I Think You Should Leave in a big Hollywood movie. In the same when I was watching I Think You Should Leave, I went, oh my God, that's the little girl from uh, uh, Tanner? No? Is that what it's called? Lancer. The little girl from Lancer from uh, Once Upon a Time, dot, 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 in Hollywood. She, she's in a oh. great skit. She's in a great skit from, a, skit from I Think You Should Leave. I got really excited. Uh, here's the weird thing about, okay, so, so in Hollywood, there's a lot of bullshit that they get the opportunity to make all these movies. Yeah. There are a few Klingons that make movies, but I'll tell you one thing. The producers, they're all Ferengi. Yeah. Without a oh, doubt. Oh, God. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. They're all Ferengi. That is some uh, special Star Trek content for all of you Trekkie, Trekker, Trek ends out there. Man, yeah. I need to find Trekkies. We're, I need to get Trekkies. That is such a great movie. I haven't seen that for so long. They used to be my go-to documentary is Trekkies. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I had an opportunity to be in Trekkies too, but I didn't take it. Oh. I just got like a message from someone. It's like, hey, we're filming Trekkies 2 in downtown Sacramento at this comedy club. You should come down. And I'm like, nah, I'm not going to. But I should have. I could have been like in the, in the, yeah. the audience in the movie. Um. So this is widely considered, uh, Corona, here is the virus. It's widely considered to be the first full-length feature film made about the coronavirus pandemic. All right, it's an hour and ten minutes, so uh, yeah. it's full longer length. Than, it's longer than Dumbo. Yeah. That is my, my tent pole for is this a movie. Dumbo is 62 minutes long. If it's longer than Dumbo, it's a movie. The fact that we call Dumbo a movie is kind of ridiculous. Yes. When they show Dumbo on TV when I was a kid, like, oh, they're going to show Dumbo on TV when I was a kid. This is so awesome. And then I go and watch it on TV, and they show a cartoon. And then they show a cartoon. And then they take a commercial break. And then they come back, and they show a cartoon. And then there's a commercial break. And then they show the entirety of Mickey and the Beanstalk. <laughs> Which is like super fucking long, and then a commercial break, and then they start Dumbo. I remember that to this day. That it's like how, how, even when I'm like 11, 10 years old, I'm like, wait, how long is Dumbo? Because this is ridiculous. So, Corona fears a virus is longer than Dumbo, so it's a movie. Uh, and what I was saying. Uh, I said this earlier in the podcast, this movie is shit, but it is historic shit. Yes. Because the director, writer, producer, director, Mostafa Keshvari, he actually got this uh, directing job by participating in the actual uh, Klingon right of Krepla. Yes. So, um, he was reading about the coronavirus in December 2019 in Canada. And by January 2020, apparently there was a lot of racism in Canada towards Asian people because of the coronavirus. And back then, they were focusing really hard on, oh, the Wu-Tang virus. Yeah. The Wu-Tang virus? Yeah. It started with... a. Uh, yeah, it's weird. The Wu-Tang virus started with old dirty bastard. He was so old and dirty. That's how he started giving it to people. Fucked up, the Wu-Tang virus. Wuhan. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so he's 
started working on the movie in January of 2022. Okay. And he started filming it in February of 2020. And then he would he finished the movie like right before the lockdown started happening. So this film was literally ahead of its time. So this film basically came out when we were still dealing with lockdowns and stuff like that. Because this film was made before the lockdown. Yeah. And it's like, and, yes. and the plot is basically before the lockdown or at oh. the point of the lockdown. Yeah. It, it, I swear to God, the entire plot of this movie was an episode of Night Court. Of what? Night Court. Night Court. I swear to God, this entire film is an episode of Night Court. Oh, uh, I don't know, uh, Dan Fielding is late to court. And he goes on the elevator. Oh, it rocks. What? It sucks? Who's in the elevator with him? I don't know, an angry veteran. Uh, a, a rich a-hole. Uh, an angry black person and a woman. What? She's pregnant? I swear to God, this is a sitcom. Yes. Oh, God, yes. I don't know. I don't remember that much of Night Court, but I swear to God, this was an episode of Night Court. Well, again, this is why I say it was an episode of Insight. God, dude, you gotta Google it. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta go YouTube it. And watch a couple of episodes of Insight. I mean, Insight practically invented the cool youth pastor. Okay? Wow. So yeah. every episode of Insight, and it was about 60 minutes with commercials and shit, uh, a heavy dramatic story of some sort like a teen pregnancy or you know anything like this you know and then jesus and it's solved and that was a lot of this movie for those of you who are listening to this podcast on uh itunes Spotify, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, whatever, however you listen to this. Uh, this is more of a visual thing, but because Bunny was talking about cool youth pastors, I'm sitting on my gaming chair backwards now. Yes. Like all the cool... Hold on. Let me get a hat. Well, hey there, champ. Yeah. <coughs> I just wanted to come and rap to you a little bit. Uh, Bunny. You know you're getting older, and uh, your body's going through some changes there. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna find some uh, hair places where it hasn't been before. There's yes, a there's a, there's a lot more blood in my pee. You know, a lot more. Uh, it's gonna be a lot more uh, pennies in your stool. <laughs> Just something that happens. Growing up. Be a young man. Let me tell you. I'm probably a sport. Let's go have a catch. Uh, I don't know if I can get out of this. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. Let me, let me... <laughs> and this movie also reminded me a bit of that me that one meme. That in the first picture, it's Peter Parker and Doctor Strange talking. And Peter Parker says, Hey, Doctor Strange, can you make everybody forget about Mephisto? And then the second panel is just credits. Uh, That's this movie, because if we dealt with actual coronavirus fact, then we would have to just jump straight to the credits. So we have yeah. to deal with a, a good chunk of coronavirus bullshit for there to be a movie at all. Yeah. That reminds me. I want to... Daddy, they took my 
my boot. I've got two reviews here. This movie currently has a 4.3 out of 10 on IMDb. Uh, Corona. There are exactly two user reviews. Okay. For this film. So, not the most popular. I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed. So, I've got two reviews. I'm going to read them both to you, and you tell me which one you agree with, okay? Okay. Okay. The first one here is a 9 out of 10 stars, and the headline says, What a microcosm of a situation of humanity. Oh, my God. That's your view of humanity? Let me read this to you. This is... What a great way to start a review, okay? I'm writing this as I watch it. I haven't rated it yet. The plot is a diverse cast of people are stuck in an elevator during the beginning of the coronavirus. The elevator moves slowly down due to, due to being in need of repair as the cast loads in. The building owner and his pregnant wife with the repairman in the elevator, then a YouTube influencer, 16 years of age, that in a wheelchair with a swastika on his forehead, and a guy that came from the gym, and at last a Chinese woman named Han Wit. I think that was a typo. Yeah. Uh, after a time, we find she's in, but before this, one can only imagine the race, nationality, moral unfindings, etc. Plus something extra <coughs> happens, and that's not all. All I can say is, read the IMDB info on this almost Play, being that it takes place in one place the whole time. I feel like you just said place like eight times, but that's fine. The acting is good, the twists and turns of being human, and the coronavirus is excellent. In some ways, this movie reminds of the movie where different are people abducted standing in circles, and through a sort of selection, the people are eliminated, causing the same sort of justifications, etc. Which is what I've been saying this whole time. <laughs> this will play very interesting in the futures as the pandemic is just a memory. As for the film, it's now over and it was an excellent piece on humanity and the mindset created by the virus. So that's our first review. Okay? Yes. Okay. Okay. Now let me read the second one. One out of ten, I want my 72 minutes back. I don't normally write movie reviews, but then I wouldn't really call this a movie. It's more like a bunch of bad actors crammed into an elevator given a one-sentence description of who they are portraying, then turned loose with no direction to guide or shape the drama, all improvised badly. I couldn't find a single redeeming thing about this, it seems like the creator of this just wanted to put what seems like ordinary people together and let them denigrate into some of the worst parts of humanity. Save your time and spend it elsewhere. This is not worth investing a minute of it. But we're investing at least 45. Yes. So, uh, so well, funny. Uh, if this is a, a gun-to-the-head situation, where I must pick one review or the other, I got to go with the first one. It's not nearly yeah, as bad as the second guy is making it out. It's horrible. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but you also said that you were high while watching the movie. But it was... But, but money was spent on these actors, and they were pretty good. Okay, I'm not sure if we saw the same movie because this almost broke me. The 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 characters were that they were playing were horrible. Yes. But did you doubt that that guy was an asshole? No, I did not doubt that that guy was an asshole. You do have a point there. That's good acting because probably he's a pretty nice guy. Yeah, that's good acting. A lot of this acting was. Was pretty competent. Certainly, well, certainly much I, more than other shit we've seen, even in the coronavirus 
yeah. category. If I had to sit down with Natasha and watch a bad movie with her, I yeah. would either put on Battlefield Earth or this. Like, and, I have watched worse before. I'm not going to watch what uh, swept away. I'm not going to watch the Chun-Li movie. And and this this was great because each character was so far over the top and so fucking ridiculous. Yeah. And everything they were doing was ridiculous. I also, it, I do like the first movie review, so kudos to the author Schlag Schlag Zug player Schlag Zug player for his review because I do agree that in some ways the movie reminds of the movie where different are the people abducted standing in circles and through a sort of selection the people are eliminated causing the same sort of justification etc. That was the first thing on my mind. And maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm mistaken and missed a little something. But as far as I understand, we established that the elevator alarm rings to the firehouse and they press the elevator alarm. So that yeah. all of this over-dramatization, it's like a bunch of people having a breakdown at the line at the DMV. It, yeah. The, the part like, that you're going to be that, saved. You're going to be okay. The part that I liked is... When and you're Vietnam, ready to resort to fucking cannibalism. Exactly. Vietnam veteran Santa Claus dies, and then the asshole businessman is like, well, who's hungry? And I'm like, dude, you've been stuck in the elevator 20 minutes. Don't yeah. resort to uh, uh, Timothy yet. So this is why I loved it, because it was so fucking ridiculous and trying to be serious. Yeah. You know, well, but personally, like, like personally. you're a victim of a delay. Yeah. A delay. And what the fuck is this? The coronavirus hits? Elevators are going to stop working? This is the last elevator out of the building? And the elevator just won't, well, it has mechanical trouble, sure, but like the guy who was working on it, you made him stop. In my mind, all of these movies were watching takes place in the Yeah. Yeah. So uh this these people get coronavirus. The reason why they went to they get the coronavirus is they went to Tucson, Arizona, where they met the old man who just came home from a cruise with his wife. Yes. He was patient zero. And all of these films are just in a massive corona shared universe. Yes. First still, man, though, like, still though, the first one is my favorite. <laughs> 2025 is still my favorite out of all this, uh, out of this run. But this one is, is, is a great, Runner up. In my mind, this one just looks, seems to me to be just bad community theater. Like, it, this looks like the play that I would go see because my friend's friend's friend wrote it. Hey, Mal, do you want to come over here and give a movie review for the podcast? How I, I'm, I'm, I'm lost at how you cannot appreciate the ridiculousness. Of this. Okay, hold on, uh, Bonnie. Mal, you just came back from seeing the Minions, Minions, Rise of Gru. What are your thoughts about that? Pretty good movie. The soundtrack was in a way much better. Oh, the, the soundtrack, the soundtrack of the first one was great because it had like the doors and the needles and stuff. It doesn't have that good of a soundtrack. Ten minute warning. Seventies? I think so, yeah. Eighties, yeah. maybe. Okay. I mean, the music was good, but they didn't play it well. You know, like, all yeah. the songs were, like, super fucking short. They were good ones, but... Yeah. I wish they had a musical, you know? Yeah. It Did you stay that. for the whole credits? Not for all of them. What? But... What? 
because in the first Minions movie, there was a whole musical number after the end credits. For all you know, you missed another musical number. They sing at the Beatles Revolution after the credits in the Minions movie. You, you wait for the whole credits? I was, I was going to be peer pressured out of it anyway. Oh, you, you really should have. You got to stay for the whole credits. Oh, I am so hurt by this. So hurt by this. I am so hurt. I am shocked and chagrined. Mortified and stupefied. Personally, I like this movie, Corona Fear is a Virus, because you see this movie filmed in one take with an improvised cast and, it, and a non-existent budget except for one elevator. And you look at this film and you go, how hard can it be to make a movie, you know? Yeah. Like, I see this movie and it's very empowering because I see this movie and go, shit, bunny, you can do this. Yeah. You, absolutely. I could do this. We could all do this. It's, it, 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 it's an empowering film in that regard. Well, yes, and I, and I did appreciate it on that level that that you are making efficient use out of the little money that you have. Yeah. And I have it pegged at about 150 maybe 200 grand tops. Yeah. If we really paid the actors. Yeah, I'm I, considering I like ten grand for each actor. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I I feel like this entire movie was a commercial because, like, uh, iMovie is such a simple moving making software that any dumbass can make a film. Here, look at this, and then you see the the film with like five minutes of opening credits that begs the question, did he pay for this stock footage or did he just down it somewhere? Yeah, well, I do have the stock footage opening and closing uh, figured in, and if it's straight stock footage, then, like, that's another 10000 for the beginning and the end. Stock footage runs up pretty quick. So it's like four hundred a it, clip. Yeah, but you know the good thing about this nearly five-minute opening title sequence is, by the time it's done, there's only an hour and seven minutes that you've got to suffer through. There are now episodes of Stranger Things longer than this movie. Yes. yes. So that's something. The entire movie is ad lib, and uh, Christopher Guest. This director is not. No. 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 Like, just because Best in Show and Reno 911 look easy to make doesn't mean it's easy to make. You still need professionals to know how to ad lib. And I just felt like this entire movie is just like, oh, this is ad lib. I couldn't tell what with three people yelling at each other at the same time. Okay, so but still, what any of them are saying. I, I, I think, I think you're missing the beauty. I, I think, I think you're still not seeing the beauty here. So, an Asian woman gets on the elevator, and apparently, she has some medical training. Sees the pregnant woman and tries to help. To which the asshole husband shoves her back. She hits the side wall of the elevator, hits her head, and. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this fucking movie. This or fucking maybe movie. she's not quite dead yet. They're not sure. Nobody wants to check, but she is bleeding out from her fucking head. I was shocked that in the year of our Lord 2020. That you can still make a movie with G O O K S in it? Yeah. You can't say that. Like, 
I know this movie is trying to like combat racism, but by doing so, this felt really fucking racist. Yes. Like the the Chinese woman is saying something that sounds vaguely like the N word, and the black guy is like, "What? What?" And, and then, and then the Vietnam veteran said the G word. Yeah, but that was consistent because that was consistent because everything was over the fucking top. Everything was overly dramatic when it boils down to a delay. You got stuck yeah. in the elevator and you're going to be delayed a little bit. Yeah, this felt very much like a comedy but then, theater one act play. Then the wife, the wife I'm wants them to check the girl's lifeline. Yeah. Because in her palm cuz if she's dead, she won't have a lifeline. Yeah. And her fortune You're teller told her that life. cell phones will hurt her baby. Oh, come on. This this movie, come on. You're not giving this movie enough credit. You're saying that I missed the beauty. I think you missed the ugly. I, I, I... Then the woman laying on the floor in a puddle of her own blood is okay again. There were no lights for a third of this fucking movie. She's okay again. And then her hair, completely clean. No blood clumps or anything like that. And she's strong enough to deliver a baby. The lights were off! Yes! For yes! A third of the film! But apparently there are lights the in the elevator shaft... For you to get that nice, that nice fan look coming through the ceiling. <laughs> you know they say that cat elevator shaft is a bad mother. Shut your mouth! But I was talking about the elevator shaft. <laughs> I legitimately hated this movie. The bad ad living by bad actors. And I I legitimately had fun with this other. movie. What? It's so fucking bad. They're horrible ad libbers. They're horrible people. One okay, there are there are two things I like about this movie. Number one, everyone's blame it first off, it's so ridiculous. She keeps saying Wuhan throughout the entire movie. Yeah. And everyone's like, oh she's from Wuhan. She has the virus. Oh my god, we're all gonna die. And then near the end you realize that her name is Han Wu, but in China, the last name comes first, so she's saying Wu Han, and everyone thinks, like, what the fuck is this, a Paris Company episode? Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. That is some weird-ass uh, Abbott and Costello vaudevillian routine. What is it, Corona's on first? I, on I particularly on liked, I particularly liked how when we got into the the almost famous ish bearing of the souls less than one minute when the fuck did this happen that we each still got so much to say <laughs> holy shit no we're we're, we're coming back is it just a minute less than a minute <laughs> I'm so into talking about this damn movie that we completely lost track of time. I need more time to discuss the intricate plot of some rando stuck in a friggin' elevator. We are getting that time. Oh, and it cut right there. Again, that was some good fucking timing. We are getting that time and cut.
invite sent. And I will type it over here. Invite sent. And send it over to Facebook as well. And he is, she has entered the room. Hi. There you are. This is the first time that I have not realized the time limit until it was too late. Well, because it came up and I said it, but you didn't hear it because that's when Mal came in. I didn't hear it at all. No, I yeah. didn't hear it at all. Yeah. All right. So anyway, they're having their they're having their famous, almost famous esque opening heart moment as each character is telling their story. Oh, at and, the end? And somehow this Asian woman who was dead and then not dead and they stamped her rat to death and does not Jeez. understand a word of English somehow realized what was going on in the room and realized it was her time to tell her story. Yeah. The thing that gets me The is story that, that nobody else in the elevator would understand. Yeah. The thing that gets me is that uh, some of the things that I like about this movie. Number one, uh... Everyone assumes that the woman from China has the coronavirus, but as it turns out, it's probably, spoiler alert, probably the dumb white guy. But he does say in the when you first see him that he's a parking attendant. Because he was talking about the, the black guy who was fixing the elevator. Yeah. That uh, he ticketed the car <coughs> and that they yeah. towed the car. Okay. But then he says at the end, in the big reveal that he's the one who probably has uh, Corona, he said, I was just in China on business. So I've got a question. Why is a fucking parking attendant going to Wuhan, China on a business trip? Yes. Oh, what? Was there urgent parking matters in China that they only... getting into the spirit of the movie. Now oh, you're no, getting into the spirit. There's just too much illegal parking in China. We need the best parking attendant in the world. It's February 2020. Get me America's greatest parking attendant. He needs to work on the, on the illegal parking in front of this lab. I don't get that. But I do like the scene that you're talking about where everybody's sitting there. By the end of the movie, everybody is confessing to their own stupid shit. Like, oh, I've got a twist. Oh, I've got a twist. Oh, hold my beer. Here's my twist. And everybody has, like, a twist. And like, oh, you're not the father of the child. Oh, I have cancer. I have six months to live. Oh, I'm an alcoholic. Oh, I sabotaged the elevator. And then after that, it started getting weird. One character said, oh, I actually came up with Jar Jar Bank. Yes. And it's like, whoa, what? And then uh, one person's big uh, reveal was, I also have a twist to the last 10 minutes of this film. I'm colorblind. That one yes. didn't seem like a big deal. Uh, and then, oh, the big one was the one character who said, uh, okay, it's time for me to tell the truth. I started Billy Joel's fire. Yes. Big, big reveal there. Huge. 
Another thing that I liked is the fact that, like, the kids... And the whole time, the fire departments are on the way. They're getting out of this. Yeah. It just yeah. needs to be a little patient. Go yeah. ahead. You've been locked in there for, like, 45 minutes. Yeah. Already somebody is dead. What the fuck? Somebody was dead, and somebody was dead-ish. I have been trapped inside of a party for longer than they were stuck in that elevator. Yeah. I was like, it's, I w- literally, I was in sixth grade, and we, my mom went to Target. Oh, should we go to Target? It's storming pretty bad. Oh, we can be there and back before the storm hits. And we're in Target for like 20 minutes, and then the power goes out. And we go outside, and it's a massive, like a like a typhoon, like or it, it, a massive storm. The entire parking lot was flooded, and the windows yeah. were just rattling. And and just I was in there longer than these people were in a the world's biggest elevator. Yeah, I have been to massively expensive uh, Las Vegas casinos. That had smaller elevators than this elevator. Yes. The other thing that I like is that the the, the uh, veteran, the guy in the wheelchair with the swastika on his forehead. So he's a uh, Nazi. Yes. But he's also Canadian because this is a Canadian movie. So I started thinking about the idea of <coughs> Canadian Nazis. <coughs> yeah. Sometimes I, you know, it, it, it becomes commonplace for we Americans who live in just this horrible nation to just look to our neighbors from the north and say, wow, they're so great. They're so amazing. They have universal health care and they treat each other nice. But then I'll see some documentary like that, that guy who died trying to make a grizzly suit, a grizzly proof suit. Yeah. You know, and I'll see a movie like that, and I'll go, "Oh yeah, there are dumbass Canadians." Yes, there are. And so I like the idea of Canadian Nazis. You know, a lot of times, like in America, you think like, "Oh, the far right is a real big problem here," and it is kind of nice to know that, like, "Oh, they're also in Canada." Okay. But also, I'd like to think that the Canadian Nazis still have that Canadian sort of attitude of like, hey, how's it going, eh? Yeah. Uh, you know who's ruining the uh, nation? Uh, it's them Jews, eh? <laughs> we should uh, maybe get rid of them? I don't know. You want a beer? <laughs> no, they're still nice. I like yeah. to think that a Canadian Nazi is much nicer than an American Nazi. <coughs> an American no- Nazi is marching with tiki torches and getting, getting, you know, planning to, like, bomb places. But a Canadian Nazi is just like, hey, how you doing? Uh, so you're a Jew, huh? Oh, uh, you want to go to the park? Maybe, uh, maybe uh, have a little picnic? And uh, maybe afterwards, if you'd like, I can kill you? Yeah. You know, like like Canadian Nazis, I imagine are pretty nice. So I dig that. Oh, uh, all in all, all in all, yeah, all in all. Anyway, I hate this movie. Uh, don't listen to Bunny. The movie sucks. The acting is bad. The ad living is bad. You can't see anything for the majority of the movie. The whole thing feels like a bad community theater. This May- movie feels May- extremely. Malin is so wrong. She is so wrong. You've oh, you've got that. to you, experience this movie. Bastard. Oh, what? I get it. Now that I'm a woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that so much. I love this it. movie so, is sexist. something to. This movie is something to see. It is ridiculous. It is no, I, funny. I, huh? I will say this though. This movie is so bad. I would watch this again to show someone how bad it is. You know? We might have to do a live commentary of this movie and show everybody how bad it is. This movie is, is so bad. 
that I do see myself like like I'm, I'm telling Natasha about the movie and Natasha's over there and I'm telling Natasha about it while I'm watching it and eventually it just gets so bad that you just see Natasha slowly move over next to me to to see like oh my god this is as bad as you said and next thing you know we're both watching it and and it, that's how bad it is that like okay. The movie feels extremely racist, like it's trying to make a statement about racism, but in doing so, yes. I think it's being more racist than it should. Bernard, get down. Get down, dog. Well, again, it's the Klingon view. Yeah, that is a good point. That is you good know, point. so, you so like, Klingon director. they don't quite exactly understand the subject matter, yeah. but they're trying. Like, like the movie is just like, hey, this film has an important message. You know, not all Chinese people have the coronavirus. And then we're all just sitting here going, yeah, we know that. Yeah. Did you not know that? It kind of seems like. Well, but again, this that's. movie is trying to. That's what I was saying. Like That's what I was saying with the Peter Parker meme. If you dealt with any kind of coronavirus facts, it's the opening titles and it jumps straight to the credits because there's no movie there. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, so we have to deal with all of the corona misinformation. And yes, they were all horrible people and they were all racist. Hey. While slipping into name? their, their little Jesus moments here and there. What's your name? What's your name? It's it, it's funny. Yeah. Do you know Jesus? You know Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> you, you know who he died for? You know who he died for? He died for us. He died for you. You know we're all equal here. We're all equal here, funny. What do you think about that? <laughs> This movie was filmed before the lockdown. Like you can tell that this movie was made before the coronavirus was a big deal. Yes. You know? So and you can kind of tell like now where we are at here with dealing with like over a million deaths and long COVID and all of this stuff. Watching this, this movie now is kind of quaint. Yes. Uh, but still, 2025 is number one. Yeah. Because that's bad very much in the tradition of the room. Okay. Um, I've got to I've gotta bring something up. Um, there will be a uh, programming change. Uh, so when we first started uh, 2022, the summer of COVID exploitation, I said the whole concept of it was a bunch of directors have rushed out really cheap shit, exploitation films to capitalize on the coronavirus. Right. Uh, like this week's film, like the week before that, like uh, our next film, COVID-19 Invasion Spring. Kevin Nash, NWO for life. <laughs> and, uh, so, and I said a couple of times this year that you know that these COVID exploitation films are bad because the most famous actor in any of these films is Kevin Nash. Yes. I forgot about a movie. It came out at the end of December 2020, it was a uh, it it was supposed to come out in theaters, but 
the pandemic, so it, it only came out as like a digital download. Uh, it was made with a budget of about $2 million, and it made $400,000. It, it's mainly known for being produced by Michael Bay. Okay. It's called Songbird. I just learned about it about a half hour before we started this podcast. So I need to track it down. Let me tell you the people who are in this movie. It stars Archie from Riverdale, first off. Okay. And Which then, we have not seen since that. Uh, what Christian movie was that? His yes, wife was dying. Yes, exactly. Yes. He was in that movie. I still believe. No, I still believe it was the Fred Willard movie. No, that's I'll Believe You. Oh, I'll Believe I You. Still okay. Believe it's the one where he's the singer. Whoa, Eleanor, drop in the podcast. You are dropping the podcast. Okay. This is not my computer. My computer is. Okay, there you go. So, okay. So it stars Archie from Riverdale, and it also features Craig Robinson, Bradley Whitford, Peter Stormari, uh, uh, Paul Walter Hauser, who is the, uh, the fat guy from I, I Tanya. Peter Stormari, uh, is, that, is that the guy from, like, I don't know, the New Heart Show or Bosom Buddies or some shit like that? Wait, which name? Peter Scolari? No, Stormari. Stormari. It was the guy in Fargo. There were the two criminals. It was uh, Steve Buscemi and the other guy. He was the other guy. Oh, he was the other guy. Okay, he's been in a lot of he's, shit. I know he's, who you're talking yeah, about. he's the nihilist. He's the nihilist. Yeah, he's, he's the, the nihilist. He was the guy on the mirror in Armageddon. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That guy. He's in it. And I have... It's to me more. Really? Yes. It's set in 2024, and COVID-19 has mutated into COVID-23, and it's like the fourth year of total lockdown. Okay. The lockdown started, and it never stopped, and now it's like a post-apocalyptic future where no one is allowed outside. And, like, there are Q zones. I, I've and seen outside. I don't recommend it. Yeah. Uh, the whole thing is just seems to be the absolute fucking worst. And so I'm going to have to track it down. We're not doing it next week. Next week we're doing Kevin Nash's uh, ridiculous action film, COVID-19 Invasion. I looked up the plot for it. And um, what the fuck? Hold on, let me let me let me pull up the plot. Or keeping uh, track of these I titles know. is a challenge, though. I know because they're all I the must same admit. damn names. They're yeah. All the same damn. Huh? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So here's the plot of next week's film. Rex and his men aim to kill the homeless people living in a local deserted school, hoping it'll slow a deadly strand of COVID. Now outnumbered 100 to 1, half must save his little sister. What the fuck does that mean? So our heroes are going out to slaughter homeless people. Oh, this sounds tough. I'm so confused. Yeah, are the good guys going to hit and kill the homeless people? Or is our hero one of the homeless people? I'm so confused. And there's a review of I this? am confused, and I am deeply frightened. There's a review. Okay, let me... You're deeply frightened, so let me, let me give you a review which might change your mind, okay? So here is a review from IMDb from February of 2022 by W.Y. Pol Polma. Y. Polma. And this is uh, 
the rating on IMDb is one star out of 10. Let me correct the others who don't get it. Let me read this review to you, okay? Like, okay. I'm ready to hate next week's movie until I read this review, okay? This film is a leftist attempt to smear conservatives. Okay. Not just anti-vaxxers, which, if you think about it, have a point. After all, if the left had just shut up and hadn't brought up mandates, forcing people to put something into their own body and ignoring their constitutional right to decide which health care procedures they will or will not undergo, then all of this wouldn't have happened. I personally had vaccines. I'm just fine. But I will decide what goes into my body and will not answer to anyone else on that issue, period. They are clear. They also clearly are trying to smear conservatives and anti-vaxxers as being somehow racist. So anyone with an IQ over 30 can clearly see that this isn't the case. Don't waste your time on this film. More importantly, do not give these people your money. Give them the attention they deserve. None. Oh, what a bird. Man, yeah. We leftists sure have been put in our place, haven't we? <laughs> and it's like, oh, I was ready to hate this movie until I read that review, and it's like, shit. And that's for to... this movie? Yeah, yeah, no, next yeah. Next week's movie. Next week's that, movie. COVID nineteen invasion. Sorry, that Kevin does Max. ease my mind a bit. Yeah. N W O or life. <laughs> Kevin Nash. I was Wolf Pack Red. Yeah. I was the I was the red. I wasn't the black and white. Yeah. The red. So that's all I've got for this week's movie. If you like bad movies, there's a certain type of person, and this is who we cater to. There's a certain type of person, a Pope on Film fan, a, 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 a Poppy was the name yes. that we came up with, is that you say to someone, hey, I found this movie. It's from 2020. The entire thing is ad lib, and it's all set on an elevator. It's a Canadian film about the coronavirus that was made right before the coronavirus. It's entirely ad lib, and it's the only setting is an elevator. Most people, most normal thinking people will say, yeah, that sounds horrible. I'm not going to watch it. But if you hear that and go, that sounds horrible, when will we watch it? Okay, then, yeah, this film is absolutely for you. You, yeah, the, uh, uh, and that is why I'm giving it a recommend. They chased her little pet rat around an elevator and stomped it to death. Yeah, somebody stomped a rat to death in this movie. Yeah. And then it turns out... This movie is worth your watch. It's horrible. It's so bad. But it is kind of so bad that it's like, I did that face a lot. Just a sort of, like a like a mouth gape sort of, oh. So yeah, it is pretty bad. But if you like bad movies, then this movie is for you. Yes. So uh, next week, we will be, uh, in our next episode, episode 434, we will be covering... The uh, Kevin Nash film COVID-19 Invasion, which is apparently about homeless people, and I'm going to work on getting uh, Archie's fucking Corona film. Yes. Finally, the Archie, Craig Robinson, Peter Stormari, Demi Moore movie we always want. COVID. Dun, 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 dun. All mucus, mucus. Dun, 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 dun. You are my snotty girl. <laughs> I love that. So that's next episode. COVID-19 Invasion starring Kevin Nash and W.O. for life. I'm yes. Say that every time I say his name. You're on out. You can't just say his name. you got to add the whole life. <laughs> so uh i might end up talking about wcw a lot in our next episode which is fine because i would rather talk about that than killing homeless people i don't get that but i guess we'll watch the movie and find
find out. We we'll, we'll find out. It could be a, a a kind of a running man situation, or you know. I hope they never redo Running Man because the thing about the movie Running Man is you go to the film expecting an Arnold Schwarzenegger action film. Well, what do you get? You get Richard Dawson in his starring role. Yes. He is the god. He is the rock of that film. He is you the get center, the cornerstone, the star. You not replace. Well, you cannot replace. No. Him. No. He is no. perfect. Perfect. And you get the extra bonus, double whammy of Mick Fleetwood and Dweezil Zappa. Dweezil Zappa. Uh-huh. Yeah. And Yafet Kodo. Trying to look tough and not pulling it off, Dweezil. You're just Maria not pulling Cucina it off. Alonso. Another one. God, she was... Maria Cucina Alonso. <coughs> yes, uh, Yafet Kodo. He was needing Yafet to pick up a check here. Yeah, Yafet Kodo and Maria Cucina Yes. So, uh, so that's next episode. So looking back at this episode, uh, uh, what are they called? Uh, Klingons, uh, David from Sesame Street, uh, Ohio State University. Yes. I gotta say, this has been a pretty good episode of the podcast. This has been a damn good episode. I, I agree with your statement. I I was going to say that myself, but I feel like you're the person who does the reviews and not me, and I didn't want to step on your toes or anything. But yes, I concur with your assessment and good sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve. Flash made limbs. And on behalf of Natasha, Amber, Mal, Eleanor, Max, and everybody else, I just want to say thanks for listening. And we will see you next week, you godless heathen. And you do ruffles and poopy touch. And Eleanor. Okay. And Eleanor, thank you. There you go. Cookies. Okay. But I'll still need you to put it on. Do 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 cut and print. Put it on a cookie. There you go. Thank you. Cut and print.